So welcome back friends. It's nice to be home after our three day stint at Thunder Ranch. It's time to get back to work. So I was very keen to get uh, started on the next episode of the Single Log Bridge. And then I woke up to 32 degrees and raining and snowing and sleeting. So I thought, well, this is a good time to get our timber framing tools sorted out. I haven't used them for a while. And so I pulled out ye old box here and thought I'd go through and we'll put an edge on everything. And I came across something that was very disappointing. And that was this. <laughs> this is, this is my, um, my, my uh, timber saw uh, that I oh, had a hard time finding this. I actually had to buy it in Japan and have it shipped here. It is my favorite saw and I was, it's very precious to me. And wh when I was using it last time, I, I was worried about it getting dinged up. It was not something that I wanted to put into, just put into the toolbox. It did not come with a sheath. And so this was the temporary fix. It was a, a chunk of fire hose wrapped with a piece of Gorilla duct tape as a sheath. And as you can see, it is not satisfactory. So I thought, well, this will be a perfect opportunity for us to build a traditional wooden sheath. I've taken to storing my special wood underneath my bench right here. This is a lot of wood that have been given to me by subscribers, given to me by friends, and it's my it's my fancy wood. It's my special stuff here, and it serves two purposes. It, it keeps it here where I can get to it easily, and it also uh, creates a tremendous amount of weight, so it helps to keep the bench from rocking around. So looking through here, I'm seeing something that I think that I would, two choices here. So here is, look at that, that's beautiful. That is a piece of clear vertical grain hemlock. Love hemlock. Hemlocks are next to Doug Free, next to Doug Fir, my favorite tree. We also have here a very nice piece of oak uh, that was milled by a friend of mine in Southern Oregon. We could go with that. Should we go with the oak? Or should we go with the hemlock? Boy, they're very different, hard to decide. And the winner is, you guessed it, the hemlock. So I've never really made anything like this before, so we're, we're gonna be learning together. But what I'm thinking is, uh, I thought a couple things, you know, we could have it follow this detail here. But then I thought more upon it, like, let's make it more like a samurai scabbard or what I assume a samurai scabbard is like and bring it all the way here into the handle. And that little extra thickness of that raised area might help to kind of hold it in place, be a bit of a, a friction lock. So what we're gonna do first is, is that we're gonna trace this because this is the portion that is going to be, we're going to need to chisel out a router out there and we'll do this, we'll use traditional hand tools, except I am gonna use a table saw because, well, I can. To get our half inch, we're gonna use my, my bench ruler, the General 701. Man, I love this ruler. Both of these tools, both these right here, are, are, are in my, I think, I'm pretty sure, well over 100 years old. Just incredible. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna half inch, right? So we'll, we'll set that. It's got a very keen little pointer on it there. And uh, we can push that in to the half inch mark. Now we can take our compass, it's gonna give us an exact half inch overcut. I wasn't careful and my compass moved a little bit so I went and double checked my dimension and we're good now. I'm gonna cut this out on the bandsaw really quickly. You could do this with a, a, a regular a coping saw or a jigsaw if that's all you have. So here's the rough cut or the rough shape there and you can see how that's going to fit on there. That is very nice. You know, I changed my mind. I should have known better. I don't, I like a mix of, of round with square angles and I, I was going to radius that right there. But when I took it off the bandsaw, I thought, man, that looks really, really cool. We have that beautiful radius on there and then uh, we'll do a little radius right there that will follow that line and then a square, square line here, and we'll just do that slash cut right there and not knock those corners off. It's, it's uh, I think that, uh, we'll see, everything changes, but I think that, that looks good. Now would be a good time to click the thumbs up if you haven't already. It's just a friendly reminder, don't worry about it. I, I forget as well.
before we take it over the table saw, we'll determine what the center is here. If you ever want to, you know, really double check, you can do the math and, you know, figure out what the center of this is. And if you bring your square from both sides, and of course the lines match, then you know. So we'll just put it on here. So it, we'll just do the whole thing so we can see, make sure when we're cutting that we're where we want to be. Now we have our two perfect halves. I spared you the boring details of the table saw, but just we simply just strips, uh, just ripped it right down the middle. And now these will be able to fit together nice and tightly. We'll glue them together. And if we do it right, they'll actually look like one piece. With our halves separated, we need to get that exact detail transferred onto the inner pieces, as you can see right there that I have on this one. And how I did that uh, was I just uh, laid the saw out here and I put it uh, tight right here at the edge and I took two combination squares and set them uh, for a half inch depth that was what our overcut was right and so I just uh, I put this one here and match that saw up so I'm I'm in contact here and here hold that there and the last one right here on the blade Depending on your saw, you may find that those teeth actually stick down a little bit further than the blade. What I would do, what I'd recommend you do is, is give yourself a little extra right there, eighth of an inch or so. You don't want that to be a tight fit where the teeth are, because uh, that's going to always give you trouble. Uh, the teeth will drag on it. So let, we'll give ourselves, as I said here, about an eighth. And now we can uh, have a little bit of extra room. Once you get that, then just lay your straight edge. Protect those teeth. Don't be putting anything metal on them. They're very delicate. Connect these lines here. Now we have a little bit of little bit of leeway there. So I did the first side without you guys uh, just so I could kind of show you and then the second one we'll do together. But you can see there that that is all routed out so that will sit nicely in there. Now I I don't want to make this too tight. The more I thought about it, you know, if I try to make it, the tolerance is too tight, I'm going to be fighting it all every time I put it in, and, and I don't want that. So what I did is I set the depth uh, to be half of this thicker portion right here. So that will go in, and that will cause a little bit of resistance, not that I need a whole lot, um, and should be able to keep it in there. Now, uh, how I did this was I, I was going to route this out using the hand router, uh, but I want to, you, and you certainly can do that. You could even chisel that out. Um, but I went the, the quick and easy route and I used a, um, an electric hand, hand router. I'll show that to you here. You may not be familiar with this tool. This is something that I, the first time I saw this being used, I think was on um, Samurai Carpenter. He used this uh, with, a, I think it had a mortising bit. And this, this, I was late, late to figuring this one out, but this is one of my favorite shop tools. It, it's, a, it's such a time saver and it saves so much use and it's so usable because of its small size. And what it's got is it's just got a little, I just put, bought a little um, Diablo mortising bit in there that, um, and I've got that set down there about a sixteenth of an inch. And what I like about these is that they're very, they're very controllable and you can do a ton of work. All I, all I did was just to lay that down in there and you can see here if I turn the side profile, laid that down in there uh, and did just by hand very carefully just follow that line. So simple to do this by hand takes a, a tremendous amount of time. It, it can be done. Um, maybe we should just do the other one by hand to see. But no, I got other things to do. We got so, so many things going on. I want to get to the big project and I've got a lot of tools to sharpen. So we'll just do this. But I think you get the point. These are two tools that I am definitely going to put in my Amazon store. This parallel clamp, the jet parallel clamp with the big wide plastic sides on it. I, I could get away, I wouldn't even need a bench vise if I just had this. If you just have a regular bench, you know, you take an old solid core door and put a couple legs on it and throw a little wood vise on it. Man, you're in action. You can do a lot of things around your house and get one of these. Um, the 31 incher seems to be perfect. I mean, it clamps and holds everything and it's got a soft plastic on it. So it does it. If you do get your tools, if you slip, as I do all the time, they go into this or your blades and they don't damage them. It's a really a nice little, a little clamp. So I'll put that uh, and a good hand router in there as well. Cause these two tools, you can just do so many things. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll, uh, I'll clamp this on here because I don't want it to move around um, and I'll do one side at a time. I'll clamp this side and then we'll spin it around and do the other side.
Now, because we have square edges at a round router bit, you just take your chisel and you might be able to need to clean up those corners a little bit. If we did our work right, it should lay right in there. Now we're ready to check our fit. So I've clamped both pieces tight in the vise. You can see here that everything fits nice, except for we have a problem there. So this thick piece, the thicker piece right there um, that holds the, the blade um, is not going to fit in there. And I, and I kind of knew that. I, I, I wanted to start, start slow. We routed it all out. Uh, I wanted it not to be too tight, you know, but not too loose either. Um, but um, I'd like to have this to be really precise and just create a little bit of friction on there. So what we're going to do is uh, we'll, we'll take this apart and uh, trace that out and then take that down just a little bit so that fits in there. But so far, so good. Now remember, as I've always said, this is marginal woodworking, so don't come here for how to do anything. <laughs> so uh, one good thing we can do here is we can take this off. Um, take the blade off. These are replaceable, by the way, if you didn't gather that already. And now we have, we have a perfect template right there. So that's the only portion that needs to go down. We don't need to, we don't need to remove a whole bunch of material. Uh, so we can just draw that there. Let's try our fit now there. Square up the edges. Oh, it does have a delightful shape to it, doesn't it? Just like kind of a copy of the, that beautiful blade. If I hold these tight. Yep, that's it. It's not super tight. It's, it'll be come in and out very easily. I don't have as much retention in there as I probably would have liked. No, I think it is actually. I think it's probably just about perfect. But this isn't something that needs to stay on. Um, or it's, it's not like a knife sheath that's got to be strapped on. It's going to be put in the box. This is just to protect it while it's lying, lying in my toolbox. But that fits very nicely. Here you can see from the back side, so we've got that really small kerf there, and then a, that oval, the bigger where the handle fits in. Let's take a quick look here before we glue up. So we can see it's not uh, overly tight anywhere, so it's not going to give us trouble, but isn't it beautiful? It's very beautiful. Once that's clamped in there, you can see that that um, is going to look almost look like one piece, especially after we plane it and the glue will fill up any, any um, little imperfections on that. But it, it is basically a, a, a one inch larger cross section of the blade itself and it just looks gorgeous. It just is so pretty. It fills the, or just follows all those same, same lines. Very simple project, something you can do yourself, but very satisfying. And you can do this for all of your saws. And actually, um, I'm going to make another one. One of the saws that I use a lot uh, for doing the timber work is, uh, is the Japanese pole saw here. And these, uh, you know, these are really hard to look after. And they're, when you put them in your toolbox, they're going to get ruined. Um, so we could do the same thing, do that inch, half inch over uh, for this and, and uh, make a case for that as well. It'd be a, make a nice set, make one for all of the saws there. So let's do our glue up real quick and uh, get it clamped and then uh, we'll wrap it up. Okay, so we want to be kind of careful with this. I mean, we don't have a ton of surface area there. So we don't want to get too carried away with our glue because if we get a whole bunch of glue that comes out uh, and then our saw is not, or on the inside there, then our saw is not going to work, is it? Or it's not going to go in there. So we're going to have to be, we'll be just be ve oops, very sparing here. As I said, so I'm not, I am, um, it seems like in my woodworking projects, it all comes undone when the glue comes out. <laughs> I always use too much. All right, we'll glue both sides, cover that whole area. There we go, that looks a little bit better. Let's wipe off that, wipe off that excess. 
I don't care if it comes out on the outside because we're gonna we're gonna hand plane all of that and make it nice. Well, that looks pretty good. Let me glue that shouldn't be too much on the inside there. Now, if you have a flat surface, since we have that flat bottom, we can use that. There we go, we'll use that. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clamp it in a vise and then we'll um, use a small clamp on the front portion right there. Here's another area where those big jaws on that clamp come in so handy. And one last time before the glue sets up, we'll just double check that that's, everything's working and in a line. All right, friends, so that's it for today. We'll, uh, I'll show you, we'll, we'll do that last planing a little bit once that uh, glue sets up. I'll, I'll show, probably should show you the finished uh, sheath Oh, we get, we're going to use that for the, the one log bridge. So um, I've got some chisels. I got some chisels and uh, bark spud and lots of tools here to sharpen up and prep for that. But hopefully the, the weather will co cooperate tomorrow. Oh, what, one thing that came up the other day on, on saws that someone asked, I thought I'd share with you, is uh, several of you bought the, um, the Ichiban, my, the Ichiban saw that I recommend uh, for doing your garden, working on your yard, and, and it's just a wonderful saw. Uh, and after using it, it gets, get, your saws are getting all covered with sap uh, and how to get that off. It's, it's hard to get off without damaging the teeth, uh, but actually it's not. So what you do uh, is uh, get some carburetor cleaner and a good stiff brush. That's all you need. Get the carburetor cleaner. Uh, you can use gasoline as well, well. Just be careful. You know, do I have to say that? Uh, but to spray it on there, even WD-40 will work, not as good as carburetor cleaner and a good stiff brush. Lay that saw down there flat and, and brush away, away, away fr from the back towards the front of the bristles. Don't, don't go side to side, don't go into them, but back. Spray that on there, let it sit a little bit, hit it a couple times, you'll clean all of that sap off immediately. The best thing to coat your saw blades with when you're done, of course, is any sort of a protectant. WD-40 is good. I like WD-40. I like Ballastol. I keep my Ballastol in a little, on a silicone type of rag here, like a gunsmith rag. Any sort of rag will do. And I, uh, that way um, it goes, it lasts forever. So even your WD-40, you know, when you use your WD-40, what you spray on there and what actually gets on the item that you're spraying, you're probably getting like one fraction, 0.001% of what, what's falling on the ground and going out into the air. So what you do is get yourself a little plastic tub, a little Tupperware or a, a butter dish or whatever, something that will seal a nice quality rag, like a gunsmith rag, saturate that thing and then wring it out in there and then keep it in there. And then when you want to protect stuff, you pull it out and you just wipe it down. Wipe it down and you don't waste all of that... Uh, uh, all of that material, all of that penetrating oil, it works better. So it's not just for hand planes, but it works for everything. So that's what you want. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, let's uh, keep, keep us in your prayers and, uh, and also that the weather will be nice tomorrow so we can go back outside. And we'll see you guys on the next video.